So, you actually drove this car when it came into the lot, didn't you? Yeah, it was running. It was running. You even said the AC worked. Yes, AC was working as well too. And, and you, you work here at the yard. You actually tried to buy the car and they wouldn't let you. Yeah, because, you know, this paper is the paper's problem. You know? Yeah. Yeah, titles and problems like that. So there we go, guys. Yeah, the, but it's, it's a good running car. It's a good running car. He actually drove it around the lot. There we go. We got this nasty uh, engine out of here. And it's time to go uh, throw it in the back of the pickup truck. So I'll see you guys in a little while. All right, what's up everybody? Today we are at the junkyard. I got a notification that there was a Mercedes 300 class and here it is. So pretty cool, this one has the Euro headlights on it. And uh, man, we have tons of parts down here. We've got a complete engine, so that's cool. Some injector lines. I need those. I was looking for these the other day. Looks like a Bowden cable over there. We got a complete car here. Um, 213,000 miles. I'll uh, snag the gauge cluster. And uh, I don't know. Maybe I can pull out, have this engine pulled. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what we got. I mean, this is a complete car and it looks like 84, 85, because we still have the, uh, we don't have the, uh, um, our, uh, the amplifier here for the tachometer. So that means it has the OVP relay up there. Yeah, I'm gonna grab that good old mono valve. There's some good door panels. Got a good one over there too. Probably gonna grab a bunch of these switches. The climate control, we'll grab that. Yeah, got some good seats. Those are decent seats. This car was, uh, yeah. This car was in pretty good condition, and we can <clears throat> we can see that there was a I think there was a side impact over here. Looks like they were hit right there. I don't know why it's here. That's not a that's not a bad accident. That's uh, strange. That's that's the only damage I see on it. So let's see what we got back here. There we go. There's our Becker radio. Send that off to Becker, have it restored. That's uh, that's the good model. So we'll go ahead and take that guy. That's from an 83, it looks like. So I got all my tools here. And uh, there's some good looking, the bunt wheels aren't too bad. God, I've got a, I'm overloaded with bunt wheels though. But uh, yeah, we'll grab the Euro headlight. And uh, man, I'd like to just grab this whole engine. Anyway, looks like I'm the first guy to make it to this car. I got the notification a few minutes ago over email. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna start popping stuff off of here and see what we can take home with us. So uh, see you in a little while. I'll show you what I score when I get back to the shop. All right, guys, I've been here for an, about an hour. You can see I stripped the Euro headlights. The gas tank, basically gauge cluster, floor mats, all the in, all the interior bits and pieces. Uh, the I need to go back to the shop and get my injector socket to get the injectors out. Unfortunately, I can't pull the engine out here. Uh, 
So I'm grabbing whatever I can off of it. I'll probably get the valve cover. Uh, I've stripped all the climate control modules and blower modules under here. All the vents, the climate control, the gauge cluster, uh, the uh, fuel sending unit, and uh, yeah, I got the, uh, there we go. Those were in really good condition. I don't know if I'll ever need those, but I'm gonna take them anyway. I've actually never seen these things fail. There we go. This thing is stacked. You can see gauge clusters down in there. So that's about all I can do until I get some more wrenches uh, to come back. I wanna get that injection pump. And this is an 84 300 D with 200,000 miles on it. So, and they drove it into the lot. So unfortunately I can't get the engine, but I'm gonna get everything I can off of it. So I'm gonna head back to the shop, pay for this, get it in the trunk, head back to the shop. And I'll see if I can get back down here. All right guys, it's the next day. Uh, I'm going back to the junkyard. I'm pulling the engine and uh, the rear axles uh, and transmission because I just can't leave it down there. This car was actually driven on the lot by the junkyard folks. And the guy came up to me uh, that worked at the junkyard um, and said, hey, yeah, when that car came in the lot, I drove it around the lot and the AC even still worked uh, and it started right up. So everything in this car was working and there was no damage. Like there was a minor fender bender. Like uh, it, it didn't justify going to the junkyard and uh, the guy just said the folks wanted to get rid of it. They didn't care. They just dropped it off. So it's a, it was a running car, which is crazy. Um, so I'm going back today. Here's the, the score from yesterday. I got to inventory this and total it all up. This was 420 bucks. That alone is $400. A rust-free, great condition gas tank. Um, so... That right there pays for all of this. That's the beauty of going to junkyards. Now, I was out there for hours doing the labor, but we got the climate control. That's a Grand Prix 612, Becker Grand Prix. All the window switches, I can actually refinish that wood. Um, first aid kit, that needs to be uh, repainted, dyed. There's the gauge cluster, that's good. Um, all the trim pieces except one, uh, which was, or no, two, the driver's door and the driver's front fender. That's where they were bent in a, in a fender bender. Uh, those are Euro headlights. Now, that one has a little crack in it, so that glass would have to be replaced, but there's some value there. Uh, cruise control, blower motor, uh, uh, temperature con regulator, side markers. That is the trim for the driver's seat under uh, dash kick panels. Air cleaner, that's the vacuum canister from the back. And here's all the bits and pieces I just put in the glove box. Bunch of little clips, screws, all that kind of stuff. Those always come in handy. There's the coveted mono valve. And it looks like somebody put a fresh mono valve in it. I'll take that out and take a look. There's all the uh, vents. And here's floor mat mats. Now these are dirty. But uh, when I use the, uh, where is it, uh, the Hoover uh, wet dry vac, guys, believe it, these will clean up extremely nice. Now, if they don't, for example, say this one doesn't clean up, well, I have some good carpet, and I can take off the backing uh, foam and attach it. Let's see, there's the insulation, which is all in great condition on these, and I can attach it to some good mats. So, and... Ignore these. These are fenders I just got in from uh, Lebanon. These are original E500 fenders that we're putting on the race car. So I'm uh, going back to the junkyard. I'm getting a bunch of tools because I got to disconnect the drive shaft, the rear axles, unbolt the engine. Yeah, it's going to be a hot day and a long day. But uh, I'll throw a tire back here. And then the forklift guy is going to set the engine on the tire. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted.
All right, here we are guys, back at day two. I have upgraded the tools required, including a battery powered Sawzall. Because to get this engine out, I'm not gonna be able to unbolt the transmission here in a junkyard. So I'm just gonna cut out the core support. And that way the forklift can just pull the whole engine and transmission forward. Uh, I'm gonna get under the car now, try to unbolt the drive shaft flex disc and the transmission mounts. Uh, and then I'll probably just take the saws on and cut through all the hoses and lines up here uh, Just so we can get at the engine. So wish me luck Okay, so I've gone ahead and disconnected uh, Everything on both sides of the engine and I preserved the hoses to go to the engine also the uh, rpm uh, wire the glow plug wire basically I didn't cut anything important I did clip like power steering lines and uh, the AC uh, manifold is still attached over on this side um, just basically cut everything through there but uh, preserved the original wiring here we go I think that's a coolant sensor and I preserved the wiring for this sensor here um, so basically I, I, I kept all the sensors with the original wiring going to the engine intact I didn't cut them and let's see back here so I think we're good we're gonna oh I also removed the radiator and what I've done and guys they will not let you purchase the whole car so it's okay that I'm doing this to this car um, I, I cut the core support right here in here with a sawzall because they come with a forklift and we're gonna i just want to remove that piece and have them lift it straight out so i just got to go get the uh, drive shaft undone transmission undone and the two engine bolts and then uh i think we can just lift this forward and out of the engine um let's see okay i'll probably have to cut cut that speedometer cable unless i can pull it might be able to just pull this through the dash and save it. There we go. All right, there we go. We're gonna save the speedometer cable and we'll just tuck this right up in here so we can leave that attached to the engine. I'll uh, tuck it down in here because basically the forklift's gonna come and those things are violent. They're just gonna lift and pull it out and it's just gonna rip anything I forgot to disconnect. So I need to probably go under and cut the ground straps or undo those. You can see there's a ground strap way down there. And uh, let's go into the car and look at this uh, transmission and flex disc. So I'm under the car. We gotta get the flex disc out. I'm both the transmission. Now I wanna save that downpipe uh, from the turbo. I don't wanna cut that. So I can undo those two bolts there on the exhaust. And this exhaust is also in great condition. So hopefully, uh, yeah, I can just disconnect that exhaust and save it. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with that original exhaust. No, there's not even any surface rust on it. So this is clearly in a, a Georgia car. So let's go ahead and get started up here. Eyes all loose by hand. gonna get these out of here I'll leave uh... so now I'm gonna crawl up uh, there from I'll come in from the front and undo those uh, engine bolts and I was able to get that one loose over here and then we have another one that is gonna be right there let's see if we can break that one loose without stripping it and then I also have to uh, detach the engine shock. You can see it right there. So I might actually just cut that with a sawzall. All right, I had to get the big half inch out with an adapter in order to crack this uh, passenger side loose. But uh, I got it and it did not strip the head. So we got both engine mounts loose. So we're pretty much home free now. So I'm gonna detach the bolts that are attached to the flange on the, on the uh, transmission. That way it'll just come off the end of the transmission. So that's one, two, see if I can spin this. Yeah, there we go, we can spin it. So, and then there's a third one right up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on that. All right guys, that is all disconnected. 
the flex disc is disconnected from the transmission the exhaust downpipe is disconnected and let's go out front see what we've done up here so, I'm gonna go ahead and go up here talk to the uh, forklift driver see what we can do about getting this engine out so I'll show you guys where I am oh. there we go This is the pool apart in uh, South Atlanta. Pretty big yard. And uh, we're gonna get this engine out, stay tuned. I think I should probably go for a tetanus shot after this too. <laughs> Just kidding. So, you actually drove this car when it came into the lot, didn't you? Yeah, it was running. It was running, you even said the AC worked. Yes. And, and you you work here at the yard you actually tried to buy the car and they wouldn't let you yeah because you know this paper is paper's problem you know? yeah yeah paddles are problems like that so there we go guys yeah the, but it's, it's a good running car it's a good running car he actually drove it around the lot you have an e30 right yes I do. so very cool well there we go we got this nasty uh engine out of here and it's time to go uh, throw it in the back of the pickup truck so i'll see you guys in a little while all right, there we go. That's how it's done right there. So I'm gonna go talk to the uh, talk to the cashier and then meet him around the side of the building, and get it on the truck. Yeah, let me go look around. Go on in. Right there. Man, that was impressive. MJ's a man at Pull Apart. Thank you, MJ. All right, guys, mission accomplished. We have an engine in the back of the truck. All right, I'm gonna get this back to the shop, get it off the truck, and I don't know what we're gonna do with this. Maybe we'll rebuild it. Maybe somebody gets a engine, I don't know. All right, guys, we are officially done gutting the 300d if anybody else wants some panels they're still here but we pretty much got all the mechanicals uh today was the last day down here and i got the axles because i'm going to rebuild the axles at cv source so i can have a spare set on the shelf and the bumper was very nice very good condition bumper and although it's dirty that is a rock solid exhaust with zero rust so i'm gonna take all that back to the shop and uh, that was about a three-day process anyway. all right I've got the engine on the hoist and I'm gonna attempt <laughs> to just drive the truck away and see what happens it might crash to the ground who knows Ah, there we go. Much safer height. <laughs> it's always sketchy when you have these engines way up in the air. And I'm experimenting. I'm going to try some Spray 9. Uh, this is great for cleaning uh, MB Tech seats, but you, uh, you got to know how to do it or you'll mess your seats up. You spray it on there and you wipe it off real quick. You don't let it sit. But this cleans up MB Tech's great. Um, I'm going to see how it does on just regular old uh, cleaning up an engine. I didn't realize I had this. I had some gunk uh, engine degreaser up on the uh, shelf. Oh, hey! Get!
right, and there we go, guys. Got uh, most of the big clumps of grease off of here and came out very nice. Injection pump is super clean. I just disconnected the fan up here so I could get behind it and clean. But uh, this is a nice motor. This is, uh, it cleaned up nice. Looks like got all down in there good. And uh, I don't know. I'll probably put this on a test stand and, and run it. Or uh, who knows, I might tear it apart, do a, do a refresh on it. But uh, that's a fully intact 1984. 300D OM617 engine in good running condition. So that was a score. Thanks for watching the series, guys. Or Well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it.